This program report is brought to you by the Asia World City. More and more vehicles are clogging the roads of Metro Manila every day, but more and more people seem to have a harder time getting a ride. And what seems to be the problem? Here's Jing Magsaysay with the second part of our special report on transportation. What does it take to become a Metro Manila commuter? It takes a lot of courage, a lot of conviction. It also helps to be a little crazy and masochistic. Let's take the case of a typical Makati employee who lives in Kaloocan or further up north. He should wake up at 5.30 in the morning to get a ride by 6.30 to be able to beat the traffic which builds up at 7.30 in the morning. He may be too early for work, but it's better being too early than being too late. There are roughly 5 million people on Metro Manila streets every day. These people vie for a place on the anemic mass transportation system in the metropolis. In 1981, it took a commuter an average of 30 minutes to get a ride. Today, studies show that it takes the same commuter an average of 60 minutes to an hour and a half to get a ride. Bus occupancy rates have increased from 60% just last year to 86% in January of this year. This is graphically stated by the overcrowded buses and commuter line streets. The traditional concept of mass transportation in the city has been the jeepney, a freak of post-World War II days. Buses, tricycles, taxis, and private cars. Only recently was an alternative idea introduced. Ballyhooed at first as a white elephant that won't work, the light railway transit system today has proven that mass rail transit modes of transportation is the answer to our problems. It has not only improved to some extent the congestion along Rizal Avenue up to Monumento, but it has also proven that given proper guidance, the Filipino commuter can follow rules and keep the thing working and clean. We have relied too much on traditional road vehicles to transport our working masses. And this traditional mentality is what got us into trouble in the first place. Metro Manila has very limited road space, but still thousands of vehicles flow onto the roads each year. This has created a vicious cycle. More vehicles, private that is, means more traffic. More traffic means less trips for the buses and jeepneys. And less trips for them means less revenue, and a loss in revenue leads to an inability to maintain the buses or jeepneys in operation. Over a short period of eight years, there's been a 64% drop in the number of buses, a 45% drop in the number of minibuses, and a 17% drop in the number of jeepneys. In 1981, there were 4,000 buses. Today, there are 1,508 left. There were 1,500 minibuses. Today, only 822 are plying the streets. Of the 37,000 jeepneys, 30,788 are left. 9,382 public utility vehicles have disappeared from Metro Manila streets in a span of seven years. How long can the present fleet of buses keep on running? Why are there no new buses if there are more commuters? Shouldn't we expect more investors to bring in new buses because of the number of passengers? More questions to be answered in part three of our special report on transportation. Jing Magsaysay, ABS-CBN News.